This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Ravel Kit 854199, the TAMS panel truck, which was an SSP release version, but they're still available on the internet at auction sites. And it's a skill level 2 kit for the intermediate builder and contains 120 parts. The kit's molded in white, chrome, and clear and has vinyl tires. And it's seen just a few box arts over the years. And it's a completely uh, initial reissue, you might say. A repop of the original kit released in 1971. And it was reissued in 95. And now the uh, SSP, which is the Selected Subjects Program, has the original parts uh, in a 2014 release. Now the parts are stamped 95 on this, so you're still using some old tooling. And you get a nicely detailed V8 with lots of chrome. Chassis is simple and clean, as a 51 gasser would be. And the original decals are reproduced for this kit too. As a SSP uh, kit, this version is the same as what you would have gotten. In the 71 version. Overall the dimensions when finished are 5 and 3 quarters inches long, 2 and uh, 5, 5 16 inches wide and 2 and 3 eighths inches high. Here's my version of the open box review. Some people call it an unboxing and they'd pick up each part and tree and try and describe them if they could find the words but you can see the, all the parts here in just about five seconds. So we're going to show you how to put the kit together and tell you where the problem areas are. Please remember to follow the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines for any of the products that you hear or see mentioned and used in the uh, review here. And also note that we'll be using Model Master's liquid cement for most of the construction, but sometimes super glue for strength and white glue for clear parts. Here are the decals for this kit, and as you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. Now. Also note that you should probably use some of the decal setting solution aftermarket product uh, to help the uh, decals conform to contours and stick well to the body. The Tamps panel wagon was originally designed for the narrow streets as a delivery van for the ancient streets of London and this kit does a nice job of rendering the motor and the body and it construction starts with the motor so grab these parts and uh, we'll begin construction now. We'll assemble the motor and paint most of the parts along the way. Now the uh, instructions call out for a black motor for the block, but I used a flat OD green. I've seen both in photos on the internet. So we'll take the uh, block bottom, the top halves, a timing chain and covering heads and paint those uh, your motor color, which I used the green. And on the block top halves, paint the bell housing silver and the intake too. Now paint the belt flat black with uh, semi-gloss black pulleys and then paint the front bell housing steel. Paint the injector rail silver and then the transmission the same color. All the other parts are chromed. On the opposite side, uh, attach the oil pan to the block bottom and the top block halves to the top of the block bottom. Then attach the intake to the valley area and attach cover uh, to the manifold and the oil filler tube and magneto to the cover as well. Attach the bell housing bottom and front to the motor and attach the timing chain cover to the motor and the belt to that. Now attach the fuel pump to the back side of the small belt and insert injector tubes into the injector rails. Attach then the rails to the manifold. Uh, attach the heads to the motor and the valve covers to the heads. Now assemble the transmission and shifter and add that to the bell housing front. Attach the collectors to the exhaust and the exhaust to the motor. Now, as assembly uh, goes, this uh, kit will show its age. There's parting lines in the motor and the transmission that you would have to address if you're going to make a contest model. And the fit of the parts is a little loose and there's some gaps, uh, so you would have to fill those as well. Now, the chrome needs to be stripped and refinished as the sprue connections are uh, they're kind of in poor locations that damage the parts and they will show. Get the parts out for the uh, chassis and the rear suspension and assemble the rear differential pieces and insert the axle then add the ladder bars to each side of the differential 
paint that unit black and install the brake and the leaf spring units uh, to the finished differential. And note that um, the paint the chassis pan, uh, you know, in this photo, and then the frame rails are uh, black, and the inner floor area underneath and the rear panel are body color. Then paint the wooden floor area brown, and you'll need to clear coat the rear panel only, and then paint the drive shaft steel. On the underside of the chassis, um, there's also some script and ejector pins uh, marks that need to be finished, uh, you know, prior to finishing the chassis, especially if you're making a contest build. And I just used a uh, blade uh, from a hobby knife and some sandpaper to sand it smooth. Here is what the uh, finished assembly and chassis will look like. Uh, so on the chassis, attach the rear suspension unit to the frame tabs, and then the shocks to the ladder bars, and then to the frame. And insert the drive shaft into the differential and simultaneously install the motor assembly onto the frame mounts. Here are the parts that you'll need for the wheel assemblies. So uh, to create a more realistic look on the tires, I press and rolled the tread area uh, on a sheet of uh, garnet paper uh, about 220 grit. This scuffs the tire and kind of gives it a worn look. And uh, for, you can paint the hubs and and the mount there uh, a black, semi-gloss black. Now slide the rim fronts into the tire, flip them, and then slide the rear uh, rim rears onto the t into the same tire, and glue the hubs uh, into the rim from the back side. Then take a look at uh, this one for the finished rims and attach the tire assembly uh, to the transmission mount in and into the uh, frame slots there. Now gather up the parts from the kit to uh, assemble the front suspension and the wheel assemblies there uh, so that we can uh, finish those parts. So paint all the suspension parts that aren't chromed, um, the spindle and tie rod parts that is uh, a black, a semi-gloss black. And then as with the tires, uh, snap the rim fronts into the tires and glue the rim backs in from the back side. Then attach the tie rod connectors to the brakes. Slide the brakes onto the axle and install the spindle pins into the spindles and attach those to the brakes. Now attach the tire assembly onto the spindle pins and glue the tie rod into place on the connectors. Attach the completed unit onto the frame mounts. Now the pin in the center of the spring mounts to the cross member there and I use some super glue for these parts to hold it good and give it some strength. Now attach the radius rods to the frame and axle and remember uh, to scrape off that chrome whenever you gra uh, glue some parts uh, together like that and the paint as well to make sure that they adhere. Now attach the shocks uh, to the frame and the axle. Now get these parts out to uh, and gather them together because they'll all be uh, painted body color. Now we can begin to prepare the body for uh, paint and you can see here there's some mold lines that uh, need to be removed prior to paint work so scrape the uh, high sections off and then uh, sand them smooth uh, to finish the body and remove all the blemishes. The mold lines are on the front fenders left and along the roof line on, on this photo. Uh, so prepare the body and all the parts that go into body color for primer. So after you get the, um, the sanding done, um, wet sand the parts with a thousand grit sandpaper and let them air dry uh, and then prime the parts inside and out. And after the primer dries, You'll sand them again and um, paint the parts your choice of body color. And then after this is done, we'll, we'll decal them and then choose the clear coat. Uh, because the uh, decals are, are basically placed on flat areas, they probably won't need some decal setting solution, but you should keep some handy just in case one curls or needs to be straightened up. So once again, uh, go ahead and apply your decals. Uh, smooth out any uh, water or trapped air bubbles and then uh, let them dry overnight and clear coat them to seal them into position. Now we can work on the windows and uh, as you can see here this is a sheet of acetate, clear clear acetate that's used for the windows and there are window templates that uh, you use to uh, cut out the, uh, sh the windows from the acetate sheet to install and then you'll use some uh, Elmer's or some white glue to uh, put those into place in the model. 
Now, if you want, you can replace the clear supplied acetate with, um, you know, some colored stuff that you can buy from a hobby shop. They look, they come in orange, blue, uh, just for some emphasis. So, you do the same thing as you would, and use the templates on that too. Uh, it was uh, typical of the time back then to use colored plastic to uh, accent the body color on the real cars. So, um, you could emulate that uh, era of racing uh, in that way. So grab these parts to install the doors and the and the front glass there and um, here's a picture of the uh, finished assembly and uh, paint the door panels flat black with some silver handles and then using the um, the cut uh, pieces for your windows glue the windshield in with some white glue then attach the brake pedal to the inside of the firewall and then attach the firewall uh, into the body and use some white glue to attach the door glass there and then the doors, they hang by hooks on the tabs on the firewall. So glue the inner door panels in place and uh, the hooks on the panels will complete the hinge on the doors by uh, trapping them onto the body. Now we'll complete chassis assembly and uh, put the interior parts in. So grab these parts and paint the radiator and hoses flat black with a gold cap on the radiator and paint the seats and the roll bar uh, parts uh, semi-gloss black. Now attach the radiator to the frame and install the three hoses to the radiator and motor. Install the gas pedal and install the roll bar and supports to the floor and wheel well spots. Now install the seats into place. There's uh, an assembly error here I need to point out. Um, an assembly in uh, step 11 there of the instructions. So it has you put the steering column in but first you must attach the body to the chassis prior to that. So step 12 should be completed first. Then install the body uh, to the chassis and then install the steering column. So collect these parts for the steering column and the gas tank and paint all of the column parts uh, black, semi-gloss black and paint the steering rod and the tank mounts silver. Now um, slide the steering column into the hole in the firewall and mount it to the frame. Then attach the steering rod to the column and to the tie rod on the opposite side. Now assemble the gas tank and attach that to the mounts. The mounts attach to the front cross member on the frame. And note there's not really a positive attachment point here so line it up uh, in the center and glue it into place. And for your contest builders, the tank has mold lines and a sprue attachment points that uh, will kind of ruin the chrome. So you would need to repair and re-chrome these parts as well uh, to correct that look for a nice finish. Um, and even though this is an excellent subject matter kit, uh, it shows its age in uh, the way that it was designed. So you'll have to take those extra pains if you're going to make a contest model out of this kit. For uh, some of the exterior steps here, I'm going to deviate a bit from the instructions because they have you bouncing back and forth from the front to the rear. Uh, but I'm going to finish the front parts first. Uh, it seems to be a little more consistent that way. So um, mount the grill shafts uh, into the hood and then insert the hood onto the pins on the body. Now insert the headlight into the mount and attach both to the front fenders. Then attach the steering wheel to the column and attach the door handles to the doors. There was some uh, warpage uh, in my uh, body and the hood line uh, match, so I tried some different methods to straighten it out. Um, some minor heat to warm and reposition the parts, uh, pressure and gluing, or bending the parts slightly. Uh, nothing really seemed to work, so I, I chose to cut the pins and left the hood to set on the fenders uh, so that it, it fit the most appropriate way. Here is the uh, out-of-box construction of the engine and the engine bay uh, so that you can see how this assembly looks when completed. Uh, all in all it's not bad. It's kind of a nifty subject uh, uh, there for uh, one of your models so um, I think you'll enjoy it. Now we can move to the uh, back end of the vehicle. So um, assemble the battery bottoms and the tops and paint them semi-gloss black with the silver top plugs and covers and then paint the hinges uh, black and the uh, as well as the inner door panels. Then paint the rear brake light red and uh, glue the batteries onto the floor in the back. 
and then trim the uh, acetate windows to fit there and glue them in with some white glue and uh, on the doors install the door handle and the rear light into place. I hang the doors onto the body hinges and glue the inner hinge in place in order to uh, trap the door. Now attach the uh, key to the slot on the body's rear panel. There were only a few parts left from my build and these are the ones that uh, came up for me um, and I guess it depends on how you assemble your model whether you leave some things in or not uh, but this is what you'll have left on a normal build basis. Well there you have it. We can't sugarcoat it. This kit shows its age and it was designed and made in an era where Half of the fun of building these kits was to get them to fit together and actually look decent when you were done. This one is no exception. Uh, it suffers from some parts that don't fit very well, some inaccurate uh, and almost missing uh, location points for gluing, and you're going to need to test fit and deal with some warpage and some uh, ejector pin marks and some flash. So. It's a lot of work, but it's a great subject matter, and when you get it done, it'll look great on your shelf. If you can still find one out on the internet at the auction sites, buy one and put it on your shelf. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this step-by-step -step premium scale model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. You can also find us on Facebook or at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks!